everyone, welcome to AOP story time and after um, the story today we are able to talk to the author of Counting on Catherine, Helene Becker, who's here with us today all the way from Toronto, Canada. So thanks so much for joining us, Helene, and we have a few questions for you. We'd like to know about yourself and the book. So the first question is what inspires you to write Counting on Catherine? Well, I think the first thing that really got me going was rage, rage, good feminist rage. I was working on a book called Everything Space with my son. He was my research assistant and he, um, he we had to do a page that was like space pioneers. And I said to him, you know, um, don't give me only dead white guys, right? That's not going to fly, pardon the pun. And uh, he was like, yeah, yeah, I know what you want, mom, because he knew since the time he was, you know, this big, that mom was a feminist because I'd like whisper into his crib when he was a baby, get it! And I'd go like, girls are smarter than boys. Girls can do anything. Boys, not so much, right? That's what I used to say. So, and they were like, yes, mom, we'll just have the, you know, bread and water. We get it. We're just the serving class. He, they, this is, humor was big in our house. So anyway, he sent me an email and he said, oh, mom, you are going to love this person that I found. And it was Katherine Johnson. And at that time, it was before the movie Hidden Figures had come out. There was almost nothing about Katherine Johnson on the web anywhere. Nothing. And when I started digging deeply and looking, I got mad. Right? I, I got mad and I got madder and I got even madder still because I thought, why don't we know this story? Why is this amazing person's story not being told? And there was only one reason, as far as I can tell, is that the people who were writing the stories, telling the stories, publishing the stories, didn't think that a, a woman, especially a minority's woman, could do anything useful, right? That's what they will just give you the, and then if you do, well, that kind of conflicts with our worldview, so we just won't tell you. And this has been the way it's been through all of written history. You know, that people who tell the stories tell the stories about the people they want to tell, not the rest of us. So we grew up as girls thinking, oh, well, nobody ever did these things. Not true. They had a harder time, but they did them, and they did them well, and then we never heard about them. So it's like, you see, it goes around. So I said, I'm going to write this story. So uh, not easy to find Katherine Johnson at that time. She was 96. And 96-year-olds don't often have, you know, like web pages or, you know, TikTok. They don't have that. So it's like, how do you find her? And um, I had to do some sleuthing, you know, deep, deep in the internet with phone books and triangulation and family trees and figure out a snail mail address. So I sent her a letter uh, by snail mail telling her who I was. And about a month later, I got a letter back from her daughter by snail mail saying, you know, mom would be very pleased with you to do this book for two reasons. One, first of all, we checked you out and we made sure you're okay. And we have some of your books. My grandson has them on his shelf. So we know you're legit. Yeah. And two, she taught grade five. And for her, the idea of a book being for children just tickled her totally. That was like the pinnacle as far as she was concerned. So she gave me her blessing. Wow. Fantastic. Yeah, and we're so great that you wrote the book as well because so many more people know the story of Catherine and yeah, fantastic. And do you have a favourite part of the book um, for any reason? Um, my favourite part is the art. Mm -hmm. So Del Thumaruk wrote, did the art. She is equally amazing. She's a paediatrician oh. and she started doing art as a grown-up. I mean, she's got like teenage kids. And she said, I want to do an art. And she, this was her second book. Like, oh my God. Oh my God. So I love the art. I love the way, you know, she captured, you know, the beautiful expressions on the little, like this page. How could you not love that page? There's a little tiny young Catherine in there looking up at the stars. It's just so beautiful. And she did a really good job of explaining the math as well, visually, which is really important. Because if you just say, well, she did math, what does that mean? You know, you want to understand what she did. Otherwise, it's not interesting. You know, and you don't connect it to the math you're doing at school. Fantastic. Yeah, it really helps just gel the story all together. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, and th this um, 
I think is the most important page in the book. Wait, where we'll flip, 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 flip. This one here. Because, you know, it makes it very clear how it's something that you do every day, you know, tossing a ball perhaps, that you can turn it into mathematical uh, equations. And that's what she used to figure out how to send a rocket ship to the moon. You know, when you look at that ball in your hand, look, you're doing math, right? It's amazing. Mm -hmm. And you said um, earlier that you wrote a letter to Catherine and her family, and sadly Catherine passed earlier this year, but did you ever get to meet her? Or do you know whether she was able to read the book or listen to the book? Yes and no, so I, I did speak to her. Um, her family did not want me to go and meet with her without one of them being there, which made perfect sense to me because, you know, I could have been a grifter or something. And um, everyone lived far apart. And just at the time when we were organizing a get together, one of the daughters uh, had a, um, a family crisis. So we never got to meet in person, but I did speak to uh, Mrs. Johnson on the phone and interviewed her directly. And I did meet her daughters and her other, her grandchildren and other people in person uh, at an event in Washington, DC, where she was being given a lifelong uh, award. So I didn't meet her in person, but I did speak to her. I know that, you know, she um, was happy about the book. When the book was, came out, Dow and I both uh, inscribed the books and we, I, I inscribed them and I sent them to Dow and then Dow inscribed them and we sent copies to each of her family members and to her. So we know that she had it and enjoyed it and got to see it. That was really meaningful. I kept saying to the publishers, hurry up, hurry up, he's old. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's great. I'm sure her family really appreciated having a copy as well and, and mm -hmm. the story been written down um, and worldwide as well. You know, we've, we've got it over mm -hmm. here and it's gone all over the world so that's brilliant um, and you have lots of stories particularly to do with science with space um, did you do you have a, I think you have a particular interest in those subjects but was that sparked from an early age how did you get into to writing stories about space and about science and maths so I've always been interested in science although I was not a science student per se I can't measure you know, I'm left-handed, and it, I realize that's why I can't measure, because everything is designed to be, you know, if you're holding a, a cup of liquid and it's got measuring, it's designed to be held in your left hand, you know, like the way the numbers are, or it, it's all backwards, so I was always, I was terrible at doing science, mm -hmm. and I'm always like, come on, what happens? Like, I'm very impatient, but I'm a very curious person. I've always been. I'm interested in everything, and I figure even if I'm not interested in it, at the beginning, when I start looking into it, like, you know, how does a car motor work? Like, I don't care. But then when you get into it, you're like, wow, that's totally cool. Who knew that? So curious. I'm interested in everything. And I write sort of across the board. I write all kinds of things because I'm interested in everything. So today it may be Catherine's story that caught my attention, you know, or it could be, let's see, prehistoric insects that were huge. Yeah. Wow. Or a book about robots, the kinds of robots that are being made today to do different tasks. Mm -hmm. I saw that article about the robots in The Economist mm -hmm. uh, while I was in the washroom, because that's where I like to read, and uh, it's a book. Actually, it's cute. Yeah. So did that answer the question? Yeah, I got so distracted by all the thinking. I'm waiting for the workman to start with the jackhammers now. Yeah. <laughs> but it's also, yeah, if you're interested in something, just find out more about it and let other people know. I think that's, that's absolutely brilliant. Um, and have you got anything in the pipeline, anything coming out in the next few months? But of course. <laughs> so I'm not sure where things are uh, on your side of the pond. This came out this spring wow. in, the, in North America. I'm not sure if it's available, but it's called Pirate Queen. And this is also another rage story uh, about the most powerful pirate that ever lived. Her name is Zheng Yi Sao, which actually isn't a name. It's just Mrs. Sao, you know, <laughs> Mrs. Zheng, Zheng, actually. And, um, but she was the most powerful pirate that ever lived. And she had 70,000 pirates wow. under her command. Right? 70,000 pirates. How come we don't know her story? Like when you were a kid and you wanted to be a pirate and everyone's like, well, no, no, girls can't be pirates. You can't be pirates. Wrong, yeah. wrong. So that one is out now, but not out. So that's coming soon to you. Hmm. Ah, 
I don't know, can you see them up there? Yes. Whoa. This will be out in um, the uh, next month. Uh, Emmy Nutter, the most important mathematician you never heard of. Another story, another rage story. Um, and she was literally as important as Einstein. And it, she was a contemporary and he, when his theory of relativity had a mathematical hole in it, they couldn't figure it out. Nobody could figure it out. They called Emmy and she fixed it. She figured out what was wrong with the formulas, you know, the math so that it could, he could become famous. She should have won the Nobel Prize for the theory of relativity along with him, but you know, eh. and then while she was working on the theory of relativity, you know, figuring that out, she had another insight and she developed what's called the Nurture theorem, which completely re, um, um, not reimagines, explains the foundations of the universe, the structure of the universe, that there's an underlying connection of symmetry and correspondences between various things and changed fundamentally the way people view the universe, the same way that the theory of relativity did. Do you know her? No, not until I know. Why not? Why? Like, I mean, it's just flabbergasting. So that's coming out shortly. And then on you, this is on your side of the pond, something completely different. It's called Gotica, and it's a middle grade novel, and it's a retelling of the Golem legend set in the future. So the Golem legend is this uh, man of clay that was supposedly raised in the 16th century to um, help the Jews in Prague. So this is set in the future, and it's a it's a story of um, hope, and it's quite exciting. So, Fantastic. so graphic elements in it. Really and then cool. next year, also on your side of the pond, is a book called Fish and Chips, which is a fanciful uh, look at the origin of the very, very first fish and chips wow. that were ever made okay. together. Oh, I'd be interested to hear that story. Yeah, brilliant. Well, Lynn, it's, it's been fantastic to speak to you and, and thanks for all the work you do in, in getting those names out there and, and sharing your knowledge as well. So thank you for taking the time to talk to us today. And thank you for doing this as well. It's lovely to be brought together, you know, with people who share similar interests, especially during these difficult times. There are kids watching this, you know, the one good thing about the isolation we have is that gives you freedom to really learn about something that you care about and dig into something, right? You're not, you're, you have all this time and you're going, oh, I'm so bored. Well, figure out what you care about and do a deep dive. That's a luxury yeah. that we have now. So you can do that and turn this difficult times into positive times. Fantastic. Thanks, Elaine. Lovely to talk to you. Ciao. Thanks.